America has been attacked without warning. With growing resentment, Americans learn of the treacherous assault. As a result of Pearl Harbor, my family was afraid of what white America would do to us. I was imprisoned in concentration camps. We lost our businesses. We lost our homes. Our civil rights were suspended. I was three years old. White America chose to punish Japanese-looking faces. I somehow survived. 79 years later, I'm still here. My name is Paul Hiroyoshi Tomita. I'm Japanese-American. I am 82 years old, born in Seattle, Washington. My grandparents, they read in the Japanese books in Japan that America, the streets were paved with gold. You could become rich immediately, which of course was a lie. But the thing here, they didn't know that until they came. And through hard work, we made it. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the empire of Japan. When Pearl Harbor occurred in 1941, our family was, of course, horrified. Japs evacuate vital West Coast areas for the national security. Executive Order 9066. That order gave the U.S. military the authority to arrest anybody who they thought would be an enemy to America. The U.S. military chose to only use that against Japanese Americans not against German Americans. This was our second war against Germany. They included only us. The criteria that established if you were going to go is if you were 1 16th Japanese blood or more, you had to go. Everything that we owned that we took with us, it was only what we could carry. Some people were given hours notice to liquidate all your assets. They put signs on the telephone poles. The heads of families had to report to this office and our, my father represented our family. He was assigned number 11940. From there on, that's what our family uh, was identified as, 11940. They drove us the 30 miles from Seattle to Puyallup. I was imprisoned. I was three years old. Come what may, Seattle's Japanese are packed and ready, awaiting Uncle Sam's orders. When I asked, well, wh why are we going? My mom, of course, didn't have the, you know, to tell us they're taking us away. And so she says, oh, we're going on a trip. It's kind of like going to summer camp. Initially, we were put in Puyallup and then we were shipped over to Minidoka in southern Idaho. When you first go to the camps, you see this guard tower, 30 feet high, U.S. Army soldiers on top there with searchlights. And our camp had eight of these towers in a five mile long barbed wire fencing. Dust was all over the... I'm asthmatic, I'm, I'm allergic to dust and they dumped me in a dust bowl? This is why my father, he looked at me saying, Paul Jr. is gonna die here. When we got up every morning, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ears, and any other parts had this dust, this talcum powder dust all over your body. And I remember my, my mom, before we would go to bed at night in our, our barracks, she would get newspaper, she would strip them into long strips and soak these strips and she would plaster it against the biggest holes in our barracks. The idea was to keep the dust out. I would have a difficulty breathing, so I would go to the hospitals. I didn't want to be there because I had, I'd be there alone, so I, my goal was to escape. 
And so I would devise these plans and I would go underneath all the beds going toward the uh, exit. I never made it quite ever out the door. The 300 or so residents of each block eat in a mess hall, cafeteria style. A maximum of 45 cents a day per person is allowed for food. And the actual... None of us had any power. They told us when to eat, to sleep, and everything. It was like uh, watching zombies. And essentially, you just get up, you, you get in line at the mess hall, and you wander around, you wait for lunch. And after lunch, you wait for dinner. There's, there's no future. They couldn't tell how long we were going to be there. We were told nothing, even though we were American citizens. My father, he volunteered right after Pearl Harbor. And that's the reason why we got out of Minidoka early. We were there 11 months. On December 31st, 1945, the war was over. The war ended, we were all uh, released. My family took a train all the way from the East Coast back to Seattle. After the war, we had no choice. Many of the same people maybe that we even lived in before the war wouldn't rent to us or wouldn't, you know, wouldn't let us stay there. The word back here in the, like typical in the West Coast is that, quote, if the Japs come back, we're gonna kill you. And that's why almost half of those who got out of the camps after World War II went east. We were fortunate in the fact that a few of our non-Japanese friends, they actually kept a lot of our machines and so forth for us. Unlike a lot of other Japanese Americans who put their valuables in storage, when they came back, there was nothing in there. World War II changed a lot of things. As strong as a Japanese American is, it crushed them. One thing I did notice post-World War II, uh, Japanese American, and particularly men, they drank a lot. The only people they could control is their family. So they beat their wife up, they beat their kids up. And I saw it, oh, definitely. And again, suicide, the suicides went up. And uh, many psychiatrists and psychologists said, everybody, including children who were in that camp situation, they will have at least diagnosis PTSD. At least that. America eventually, after 46 years, apologized in writing and in reparations. My fellow Americans, we gather here today to right a grave wrong. We must recognize that the internment of Japanese Americans was just that, a mistake. In 2019, I received an email from my friend uh, Nancy Ukai, and, and she said, hey, the U.S. government is going to build a 1,400 capacity detention center for unaccompanied minors' children. Would you be interested in protesting this? And so what we did, we planned on demonstrating in front of Fort Sill. Fort Sill was one of the camps that they put Japanese American leaders. It really angered me. And what I experienced myself is nothing compared to what they were potentially going to experience because they didn't have mom and dad there. To me, it was another example of white America doing despicable things to people of color. If you look in the past in history, American history, these mass incarcerations, these mass detentions or imprisonments, how come it, it happens to people of color only? The people look a little different, but it's the same shit that happened to me that they're trying to do today. See? And so it is up to me to say, stop it. We should have learned from what happened to me.